With us now is Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, uh, here to talk about this and many other matters. Senator, very good to have you. Thanks, Neil. What do you make of this and how long the government could be shut down because neither side seems to be budging? Well, you know, there is a big danger that uh, the government shut down and no one notices. And uh, in the past, the shutdowns have always been, or a lot of them have been with a Democrat president, and they do everything possible, like closing down overpasses, closing down empty parking lots, closing down the World War II memorial, which has no attendant or no cost to keep open. This time, they're not doing that, and so it's not quite as noticeable. Plus, 75% of the government's already funded, including the military. So there is a chance nobody notices. Now, I don't think it's a good idea to leave the government closed, so I think there could be a compromise. But lost in all of this about the wall is the Democrats' position right now is zero dollars for the wall. Every one of them voted for $25 billion for a wall last year. So certainly there is some kind of compromise to be had. If the president's asking for $5 billion and the Democrats are zero, certainly somewhere in between the two there can be a compromise made. Uh, this occurs on the same day, as you know, uh, Mitt Romney, the former presidential candidate, and now uh, the incoming senator from Utah, uh, took pen to paper and had an editorial in today's Washington Post criticizing this president and his ethical leadership. What did you think about that? You know, I think uh, calling the president dishonest for Senator Romney to come into the Senate and even before he's sworn in to call the president dishonest is not productive. And I think it's going to backfire on him. I think there's going to be a backlash from conservatives across the country who say, well, gosh, the president gave us two conservative Supreme Court leaders. The president gave us the largest tax cut in 20 or 30 years. Well, he president commended those efforts. He, he did commend those efforts. He liked that. Yeah, but then why, is he, <laughs> then why is he out there calling the president dishonest? I think that uh, when you attack someone's character like that, I think that's such a low blow and so personally directed and so malevolent that uh, it's not something like, oh, we're going to, you know, someone's going to change their character. He's now called his character dishonest. And I think that's a bad way for him to start in the Senate because I think it's going to spoil relations between his representation of Utah and the president. Now, you know, you said worse things, Senator, when you were running against Mr. Trump for president. Uh, politics is politics. I understand that. But you said, I think there is a sophomore quality about Mr. Trump, about his visceral response to attack people and their appearance, short, tall, fat, ugly. This was back in September 2015. Now, I know that was when you were running well, against coming, him. That was but is that, that, is that, was that coming from game? a short? That was coming from a that was coming from a short guy running against him in the Republican primary. No, I think uh, things are different, and the tenor is different when you're competing for the same office in the same election. I don't uh, say that it's not. So I had some choice words, and I still have some choice disagreements with the president on occasion. But since he's been elected president, I try not to have personal uh, character assassination or attacks on him, and I try to work with him. Look, I have still voted against the president. I have on a number of occasions. I'm one of the most independent voting Republicans in the Senate caucus, and yet I choose not to go after and try to uh, drum up a, a personal attack on him, which I think is just not useful. And in, in some ways, it's sort of this, this virtue signaling. When, when Romney wants to tear down the president's character, he's sort of puffing himself up that he's somehow so virtuous well, what do and above complaint. Uh, what do you complaint. think he's trying to get? Now, the reason why I mentioned it, Senator, is that John Kasich, uh, the former Ohio governor, has challenged the president and yourself, of course, for that nomination. Uh, endorsed Romney's criticism of Trump, saying, welcome to the fray. What, do you, what did you think of that? Right. The only thing that Kasich could do if he decides to run as an independent is to try to be a spoiler and try to, to defeat the Republican nominee, which in all likelihood will be Donald Trump. I, I don't see Romney getting involved in presidential politics. I think he's had his chance and it didn't go very well. And people ought to remember, people who think they want Republicans and think Republicans are better than Democrats, Donald Trump did something extraordinary. He won Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania. That's how he won the election, and no other Republican's been able to, to duplicate that. And so we shouldn't just simply scoff at that and then people try to denigrate and, and bring down the president. Uh, there's a lot of good things that have happened, and that's what I try to spend my time on are the policies. And really one of the big things that this president's going to do, hopefully, that no one's ever done in my lifetime, is declare victory in war and come home. 
and the establishment, including Romney, is so petrified that we could actually win a war and we could actually end a war and that the people would be ecstatic if our troops came home. Our troops would be ecstatic if they came home. But all the money that we would say, we spend $50 billion a year in Afghanistan, some of that money could go towards a wall. Some of that money could go towards the debt. Some of that money could go towards building bridges and roads in our country. And the foreign policy swamp, of which I would include Romney, they are just petrified that we could actually end a war. And I'm absolutely all in with the president on this. If he can end a war, he'll be a hero that all the independents will look at, as well as some Democrats, for finally being a president who ended war. Well, let me ask you then, you obviously let bygones be bygones and a lot of the personal back and forth between you two ended uh, maybe upon his inauguration. Uh, you had said that he is my president, he is, he is everyone's president. Uh, obviously, Mitt Romney uh, doesn't feel the same way. Uh, he, he says he'll take on the president when it comes to issues he cares about uh, and, and commend him and compliment him when he, he sees things that he likes. What is it right, but that he, those two haven't settled that you and the president did? Yeah, here, here's the problem, though, is I get along fine with the president, but I do have policy disagreements. I have not been afraid ever to challenge the president. In fact, if you look at the voting records, I am more independent than any other Republican in the Senate, but yet I keep good relations with the president because I respect the office, I respect the president, Donald Trump, and I try to work with him to try to get good things done for the country and for my state. So I don't know how it really helps anybody's cause for people to stand up there like they're holier than thou. And it's like, look at me, how virtuous I am. And, and I'm going to bring down the presidency by, by criticizing his character in front of the whole nation. It does nobody any good. And in the end, I think it's going to look petty. And I think there's going to be a backlash to this. Do you think Governor Romney, now soon to be Senator Romney, is phony? Well, I think he's always been sort of a big government Republican. I think he never liked Reagan. Back in 94, when he ran against Kennedy, he says, ah, oh, I wasn't a Reagan supporter. I was an independent back when Reagan was running. He also, in the 80s, was with the crowd that was worried that Reagan wasn't hawkish enough. Remember when Reagan started talking to Gorbachev when we had the beginnings of, you know, really 30 years of decent arms control with the Soviet Union? That came from Ronald Reagan, and the hawks hated him for it. But Ronald in fact, Reagan Ronald also said, Senator, you know, the, uh, everyone should acknowledge the... 11th commander that no Republican should speak ill of other Republicans. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if Romney got the message. But, well, uh, did the, the president is, is get the message the end, talking about other Republicans? <laughs> you know, the president dishes it out. When he gets it, he doesn't, he's not quiet, he's not timid, he dishes it right back, and that's just his personality. But I think the one thing about it, for everybody that wants to question the president, I don't see you doing that. Account, I don't see you doing that. Well, you might get a little I, I sharp, th but I don't, I, I don't I think see there's, that. I think there's I think there's plenty of people questioning that. I question him on policy when I disagree with him. He knows I've stood up to him. I have talked to him on the phone, and he says, I know where your principles are, and I know you can't move on this particular vote. And we still have a good conversation. And uh, I think that's different than attacking and uh, trying to go for the jugular of someone's character. And so I do think it's different. All right. So when you hear this back and forth and Mitt Romney and what he might be doing, some have said he's setting himself up for a presidential run and hoping in the meantime that the president is so politically wounded uh, that he's right for the take. Do you agree with that? You know, I sure hope not. I think that if there were an election between Donald Trump and a primary and, and Romney, I think Romney would be wiped out. And people ought to think about, Republicans ought to think about whether or not sort of this big government, let's always be at war everywhere kind of Republican is what we want. Donald Trump actually won by being different kind of Republican, by being a Republican who said, you know what, we're not going to waste all of America's taxpayer dollars overseas. It's time for some of those countries to stand up, pay their fair share, and take care of their own people, and we're not going to keep paying forever. That was a tremendous breath of fresh air, and that's what Romney hates about it. Romney's part of this crowd that wants to send our money forever right. to all these foreign countries. They love foreign aid, and they love war, and they can't stand that Trump might end a war. All right, Senator, good catching up with you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Neil.